y'all what's going on it is your favorite auntie mo and i am back for another episode review of jocelyn's cabaret this is season one episode three don't forget your self-worth okay y'all before we get into the review as always church announcements if you have not uh, done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to your auntie's channel before you leave don't forget to let me know that you stopped by give me a thumbs up or thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you will know when your auntie uploads new content y'all look here i just want to say real quick Thank y'all to everybody that leaves messages and leaves comments and just anything on these videos. I love so much interacting and talking with everybody and meeting everybody. So when y'all leave comments, as you can see, I answer back to everybody. And just one of the coolest things that you can say to me is that I'm like your best friend in your head or I'm like your auntie or something like that in your head. Y'all just don't know what kind of compliment that is for me. So, thank you. Your auntie so I appreciate that. That lets me know that you rocking with me and you understand my crazy. And I sure enough appreciate you for that. Y'all, look here. This episode of Johnson's Cabaret was a little bit more serious than the previous two. <sighs> Fuckeries of a show that we have seen, y'all. But um, it was good to see something a little bit more serious as opposed to just the crazy ratchet shit we've seen for the last two episodes. But this episode was really good, y'all. And uh, hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. This Moscato already got your auntie hot -o. But then again, this is my third glass. So, you know, <laughs> don't judge me. Just love me. Hopefully y'all ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. Y'all, so this episode picks up where the last one ended. Y'all know that it was all out to dinner. It was the mean 304s, a.k.a. side note. If y'all don't know what the 304s is, the 304s is, is the hoes. Okay, once again, got to give my disclaimer about Jocelyn's Cabaret. Now, this show is all about the hoes, the pimps and the hoes. So if 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 you don't if you don't appreciate them hoes, you don't want to hear about them hoes, you don't like them hoes, you don't love them hoes, you don't mess them hoes, you don't know them hoes, you don't want to do them hoes, this might not be the review for you. And then I I I do curse, you know. I curse anyway, but this one for sure, I'm already giving you a parental advisory that it's all about the hoes. So if you don't care about the hoes, like you know what I'm saying. This might not be the review for you, but here, this all about the hoes, and okay, and I'm not going to keep saying hoes, I'm going to say 304s, because that's what they call them, they 304s. So, this one picks up where the last one left off, right? The light-skinned 304s was going at it with the dark-skinned 304s, because they feel like the dark-skinned 304s is jealous of them, which, I'm just keep it real, and I hope don't nobody take no offense at all when I say this, but... Chastity and Daisy, they light skin 304s, right? They got a lot of attitude, a lot of cockiness about them, and they steady coming at Jade and Lucky, which are the dark skin 304s, because they feel like that they're not up to their standards, they're not up to their level, they don't look like this, and whoop de whoop, yada, yada, yada. And it could or could not have anything to do, you know, with, with, with the skin tone. That's just what it seems like when it's being put out there. But if you put them side by side, strip off all the makeup, they, uh, Lucky and Jade are so much more beautiful than, than, than Daisy and, and Chazity. Just from their attitude alone and then their physical appearance, they're so beautiful. And I don't understand why they feel like they have to come out, I mean, come at they, uh, Jade and Lucky, especially Jade. Jade will stick back up to their ass. She don't give a damn. She a low that gangster tripping the banger. She a 304 from the 504. She don't give a damn. We'll go upside your fofo. You, you keep talking that goddamn shit after you get snatched up. That's who Jay is. Now, Lucky, on the other hand, she's more quiet. She's more reserved. She ain't with the drama. She's shy. She ain't with the arguing and all that. But, you know, she's she's a quiet 304. She ain't out here, you know what I'm saying, trying to put nobody else down. She's just trying to get her hustle so she can go on about her business and do what the hell she gotta do, right? Now, as you remember, Jay left because Jay had to go catch a day. She like, look, I'm not finna sit here and go back and forth with these hoes when I got a regular customer waiting on me ready to pimp out some money, a uh, trick out some money. I'm finna to go and peace out on you hoes. I ain't got time for this shit. After she leaves, Johnson is telling um, Chastity and Daisy, like, look here. Why y'all steady bullying this girl and coming at this girl? I can't wait to see her glow up on y'all ass and end up 
not paying you bitches dust and end up surpassing anything that you ever thought about doing in life because you steady coming down on her thinking that she not on your level. Now, Daisy's whole thing is she feels like uh, I'm your bottom bitch. Like, I'm, I'm the special hoe. Why you got to come at me? You should be agreeing with anything that I, that I say. You know what I'm saying? I'm the bottom bitch. But Johnson's like, look here. 304s is 304s. Right is right and wrong is wrong. And you steady coming at this 304 when y'all don't get down on the same damn thing. That's what I didn't understand. Like, how you gonna knock this female when you a 304 like she a 304? Like, what? Now, Lucky tells him, I'm not here for the drama. Like, I got a whole lot of shit going on. And then she tells Daisy, like, look here, I wanted to let you know that I didn't appreciate the whole situation that you said about my whole living situation. Because Daisy makes a comment, like, I know you need to get on the winning team because, Lucky, I know you need a deposit for your new place. Whoop -de -whoop. Now, at, from the first two episodes, we really didn't learn too much about Lucky and, you know, this whole situation they were saying about her apartment burned down. But Lucky broke it down to him. Look here, I got a lot of shit going on in my life, in my past, and shit that I'm dealing with now that I'm trying to get over. She tells him, look here, the last living situation I was in, I had a roommate. The bitch stopped paying the rent. I had to carry the rent for six months. I finally told her ass, I'm sick of carrying your ass. You finna have to pay this rent. She got pissed off at me. Have to set the whole damn apartment on fire with all lucky shit in there. So she asked out on that. Then she said her previous manager, you know what that is, the P-I-M-P. Her previous manager did her dirty. He abused her, left her stranded out in the city, took her ID, her keys, her wallet, her phone, her everything. Left this bitch stranded out in a whole other city. Beat up, bruised, battered, not a goddamn thing left to her goddamn name. So she, first of all, that's the reason why she's, you know what I'm saying? She didn't have the place that she was at. This is her rumor while you sitting up here stirring up shit about this girl life and you don't know a goddamn thing about her. That's why I say Chazity and Daisy, they just real bullies. Like they steady bullying on Lucky and Jay. Like y'all ain't got the same kind of struggles that these girls got. Like it's. One three oh four ain't better than a leg. So I don't get that. Now, as Lucky is telling her story, she gets real emotional. She starts crying because she's saying like, you know, I had everything basically taken away from me and I had to start all over again. And so I'm already, you know, depressed, trying to get over everything. And then I steady got y'all coming at me, hating on me on some old bullshit. She cries, start breaking down. This bitch Daisy starts crying out of nowhere. Everybody looking at her like, bitch, what you crying at? She's like, oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm on my period, y'all. I can't help it. Like, oh. This shit just emotional. Oh, they like, bitch, Daisy, pull it together, bitch. <laughs> pull it together. So after that, you know, Daisy and Chastity was able to show um a little bit more empathy towards Lucky and everything that she had going on. You know what I'm saying? They like, you know, we all understand your struggle. And we understand that you got a lot going on. So, bitch, we gonna be here for you. Your homegirl, Jay, we really still ain't fucking with her. So you can go ahead and tell her that. I can tell her that. Johnson, you can tell her that. Whoever can tell her that. But we still not fucking with her. But we understand where you coming from and you're struggling and all of that, right? So they begin to talk about the new man that she got in her life. His name is Sebastian or Shabazz or something like that. Now she says Shabazz, he's not her pimp. He's not her boyfriend, but he's like her special nigga. He takes care of everything for her. And he was there for her to pick her up after the whole situation and all that that she was in right now. Johnson is teasing her, talking about he this old man and that's nasty. Well, that old man probably got long bread. That's all I'm saying. I ain't saying you yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, that old man got old money, and old money is always better than new money. That's just what I'm saying. Look here, over here talking like I know something. I'm just saying. Later on, Johnson ends up going to lunch with her boyfriend, or fiance, Ballistic, and she tells him about the whole situation with the dinner with the girls, how they end up getting into it. She says how she feels so bad for Jay and for Lucky because she's been in their shoes before. She knows their whole struggle, whoop de whoop yada, yada. She wants to go, and she wants to go holler at Jay, just so that Jay knows that she's not alone, that she understands she got a struggle, she got a hustle, she got something that she got to do, but she still wants her to be the part of, of this cabaret that she putting together. Now, once again, how the cabaret going to be different from G5 or any other strip club they were? Somebody drop it down below in the comments and let me know. Because these, these heifers don't rap, they don't sing, they don't do nails, they don't do hair, they don't sew no clothes. 
They don't put rhinestones on nothing. They not making friendship bracelets. Like, what is these bitches doing to do this cabaret, y'all? Please, help y'all and see y'all. You know, I'm almost 40. I'm, I'm what some folk would consider to be old, old school. Help a bitch out, because I still don't get it. Now, later on, y'all, we end up seeing Lucky and Shabazz. Shabazz is her, quote-unquote, special nigga. Now, they talk about, you know, the whole situation about when he first met her, how she was basically 90 pounds, soaking wet, how they actually first met on Instagram. She explained to him her whole situation. He basically told her, look here, I got an avenue of a lot of ways. You can make a lot of money. I'm going to fly you out here. I'm going to help you get on your motherfucking feet. Zaddy Shark finna be here for you or whatever, right? So he flew her out. They flew her out, bitch. Flew her out, bitch. Flew her ass out there to Miami, said when she got there, she was 90 pounds, soaking wet, beat up, bruised up, battered, didn't have a goddamn thing to her name. He done helped upgrade her, got the bitch some bundles, got her nails done, hair done, everything did, then made this bitch all fancy. And so now he's, you know, putting her up in a nice little living situation, got her independently 304 and I mean, don't get me wrong, he's still gonna get his cut, you know what I'm saying, oh, Zaddy Shark gonna get his cut or whatever, but she's an independent 304, you know what I'm saying, she can get out there and get out, she live, you know what I'm saying, all this, that, and the other, but she was saying about how at the dinner, how Daisy and Chazity and Jaza were saying, you know, talking about their whole situation, about how he's old, she's young, what's going on with that, calling him a pimp and this, that, and the other, he like, look here, I don't consider me to be your boyfriend. Then again, it ain't pimping and hoeing neither. You know what I'm saying? I'm just providing you an opportunity to get out there and get it how you live and to better yourself and give you a better opportunity. Now, look here. Quite honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. Zaddy Shabazz don't seem like a bad dude. I don't know if he was just putting on for the cameras, but honestly, real recognize real. He really don't seem like he no bad dude. He don't seem like he be going upside bitches' heads. He don't seem like he want one of them kind of PIMPs. He seem like he want to kind of like, look here, bitch, you ain't got this money. Look here. I'm going to charge you double next time because I know times be hard. But, bitch, I'm going to need my money or it's going to be a problem. Bitch, I ain't a... I ain't a killer, but don't push me. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to have a, a, a blessed day and all that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's the kind of P-I-M-P he seems like. He a nice P-I-M-P, but oh, he'll give you five on black hand side if you got them try his ass, you know? But um, he tells her, like, look here, you're going to have to be prepared for them kind of questions. Thing I don't like that, that you do, you too damn soft. You let these bitches run over you. You need to learn how to develop some tough-ass skin because in this world we're living in, bitches is going to try you 24-7, so you're just going to have to be ready. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying you got to, you know, go upside them bitches' heads or nothing like that, but they at least got to be a little bit scared of you to where they think, okay, this bitch might pick up a broom or something and might sweep my ass up real quick. Let me back back, give a little 50 feet or whatever. And yeah, she's like, I'm not with that drama. I'm not with none of that. He said, I ain't, I ain't saying you got to be with none of that, but look here. It's a dog eat dog world. And, uh, hoes got to get in where they live. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't trying to upbreed no weak hoes. I just want you to, to be able to stand on your own two feet should Zaddy Shabazz not be around. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you feel me? Oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm cracking trust. <laughs> now, she asked him, do you see yourself ever marrying, you know, a female like me? He said, oh, yeah, but you know, I done told you before, you know, Zaddy Shabazz ain't settling down with just, you know, one 304. I need a stable of 304s. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need my thoroughbreds, my backups, all of that. So as long as you are right with Daddy Shabazz, Zaddy Shabazz, having his stable of bitches, hey, come on. You know what I'm saying? You could be another concubine. It is what it is. Um, but he, he really don't seem like he a bad dude. He is a P-I-M-P, though. That's the type of nigga. I'm, I'm not going to be late with his goddamn money. Any nigga that can hold a whole conversation with you with a whole toothpick hanging off the side of their mouth like this, that's stone cold goddamn killer. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Y'all, later on, we have Jocelyn Ballistic in the studio. She's doing the ad-libs to her um, song that she's got coming out or whatever, right? Now, he's telling her that he wants to, um, I think he's going to shoot the video tomorrow. So, she needs to hurry up and finish with the ad-libs. And he wants her to bring invite some of the girls to be in the video, right? Now, she already got a sour taste in her mouth for Chazity and Daisy, the way they're going against Lucky and Jay. So, she's like, all right, cool. I'm going to invite Lucky and Jay to 
be in a video, I'm gonna invite these other two bitches so they can sit back and they can watch my other two bitches be in this video or whatever, right? But it's like, look here, I, I ain't with that drama, I want that bullshit or whatever. We all, I'm gonna let you do that, but I ain't with that bullshit. She's like, oh, baby, don't worry about it. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. I ain't gonna worry about these bitches gonna get a taste or whatever. You know how Johnson be talking about that shit. Y'all, later on, Johnson goes and pulls up on Jay on the track, bitch. Jay is on the track. Out there getting her money. 304 in. And Johnson pull up with the cameras and, and the microphone and all that. She like, bitch, really? I'm not trying to give hoes free game out here. Like, why you got all these cameras? Her, when she says she ain't trying to get these hoes free game, she like, I don't want no other hoes to know where I work at. <laughs> I don't need these hoes coming around here trying to get my money. I don't give away free game. Jocelyn, like, look here. I just want to let you know that I want to be there for you. Anything that you need so that, you know, you can be right. You know, I'm here to help you. Jocelyn's like, I don't appreciate, you know, what went down the other day at dinner with Chazity and Daisy. And I let them hoes know that they was wrong for that. They need to stop bullying you. And then I think you're going to end up doing something. You're going to end up stepping on these hoes' neck or whatever. Now, Jay's whole thing is, you know, her mother passed away. And she's been super depressed since that. She's been trying to be there and help take care of her siblings since her mother passed away. She's dealing with a lot of depression. She's just dealing with everyday life with her being young being out here 304 and like i can only imagine how young she is is if lucky is 23 ain't no telling how old jay is and they both out here 304 and i think daisy herself is only like 23 24 and she a 304 with a baby by her pimp not knocking these females but it's like these women are so beautiful it's like as woman to woman sister to sister shit i want better for you sis you ain't gotta be out here doing all like you and you, you you look smart you look like you got a good head on your shoulders use what you got up here to trick these niggas out that money don't use that kitty cat but that that's just that's me on my high horse for a minute let me shut the fuck up you know what i'm saying let me shut the hell up but she just let her know like look here I want to be there for you. I want to help you. Whatever it is that you need now. Um, Jay is having second thoughts about doing the whole show. Because she's like, look here, I'm depressed. And it's only so much that I can deal with. Jocelyn lets her know, like, look here, I'm going to be in your corner. I'm going to be there backing you up. So whatever you need, just know I'm going to be there for you. Jocelyn is boo-hoo crying. Jay out there boo-hoo crying. They hug it out. And y'all, the episode ends from there. It was really good to see a sisterhood, a, a, if you will, or find like a bond instead of just the wild ratchet shit we've seen in the last two episodes. I can say I really did appreciate just seeing, you know, hearing a backstory and hearing a struggle and why they got to be out here hustling the way that they do. Like you can see it's not just about living fast and getting money in that high and that rush all of that. No, these women got real struggles, real lives, real problems, real shit they're dealing with. And I appreciated this episode. It, it wasn't a whole lot of crazy theatrics going on that I could give y'all. I'm sorry for that, but I hope that y'all still enjoyed this review because this episode was really good, y'all. I'm just saying. If y'all watched this episode, if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. I love talking to y'all. Please drop it down below and let me know. <laughs> Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'm T-Mo. We'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Mwah. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you and I sure enough appreciate you.